All right, good morning, everybody. We are here with Certified Photo Training Weekly Review. You might notice that we have an entirely new setup, so we're gonna be doing this a little different way, and we're really, really excited about that. With that said, we're gonna go ahead and dive right into the Certified Photo Training Weekly Review Birds in Flight Challenge, so here we go. All right, first up, we got Kathy. Um, Kathy, this is an amazing photograph. This definitely was cropped in. Um, you don't have your settings popped up, so it's hard for me to judge what you should do here. Um, uh, but I'm assuming you know better. You're probably at a really fast shutter speed here. I'm actually not seeing much panning going on, so you're probably above one thousandth of a second. Um, definitely a top-notch image. You're using the rule of thirds here, which is nice. Um, this is a great image get rid of that yeah that's a really good image and it looks like your focal point is probably on the um, probably on the wing of the right wing of the owl the hawk here um, so you definitely want to work on getting the focal point on the face now catching the focal point on the face with the bird in flight in the air isn't the easiest thing, as you probably know. So, but that's always your goal when you're doing either uh, pets, animals, or people. Really, anything that's alive. Um, capturing the focal point on the eye. So, um, other than that, exposure is looking fantastic. Um, yeah, fantastic image there, Kathy. You did really well. And then we got Jackie coming up here, who's really an up and comer. She's in our class. She's in our Frame Your Future class. And she's progressing really fast. So Jackie, she's at 6.3 at 1 uh, 12 50th of a second at 400 ISO, which looks really accurate. Now, I know, Jackie, that you are on either aperture or shutter priority. So I do want to get you off of that. Um, but you're doing really well here, really well. Um, and you're really sharp. I mean, one of the things with the birds in flight, which I was telling some people, is you want to catch the bird on the sun side, okay? If you capture the bird on the shadow side, because let me back that one up. You want to capture the bird ideally in direct sunlight so that you can get a faster shutter speed. If you're in direct sunlight, you've got more light, which gives you the ability to go at a faster shutter speed. So in direct sunlight, you're going to have a split exposure on the side of the bird, okay? So either one side is completely lit, and which would mean the other side is in shadow, okay? So if the other side is in shadow, that means you're actually going to have to adjust your exposure for the amount of light that's on the shadow side of the bird. So that's why I recommend photographing birds in flight um, on the sun side of the bird. So whichever side has the sun on that side, uh, lighting the bird directly from that side, which will give you a, the ability to have a faster shutter speed, okay? Um, with that said, this is a great capture, nice wingspan, nice and sharp. Everything about this image looks good, and I'm assuming this is cropped in. Jackie, let me know if this is cropped in. Um, but your settings look great, and the capture is great. You did really well. And then next up, we have Paula. Now, we're at 5.6 at 1 3 20th of a second at 100 ISO. Now, Paula, I can tell that this is probably a partly cloudy day. And so it looks to me like you probably adjusted this a little bit in Lightroom, which is fine. Um, but you could have probably gotten a better exposure and not had to adjust for it if you would have brought your ISO up some. If you would have went to like 400 ISO or something like that, that would have given you the flexibility to be at a faster shutter speed and probably would have increased your exposure some so that you can get an accurate exposure. Now, why I can see that is because I can see that the richness of the color isn't quite there. So just let me know if this was underexposed a little bit. On this photograph, it's hard to tell because it does look like it's probably partly cloudy as you have one side of the bird that's highlight you have one side of the bird that's highlight here, and then the other side is in shadow. All right, Mandy, we got Mandy next. 
This is really great because I've seen photographs like this before. Now wait, I'm wondering, Mandy, I don't know if this is your entry. I think it's a different one. And Mandy knows that she's not afraid to raise her ISO to get a faster shutter speed, which is what she did here, which was a really good move. Um, when you're capturing birds in flight, the sharpness of the bird is more important than the noise that your high ISO will create. So you can swap a high ISO to give you more noise, which is usually something that you don't want to do, but you do that for birds in flight, most especially um, when it's an overcast day or you're in low light. And that gives you the ability to be at uh, one twenty-five hundredth of a second, which is extremely fast. And she did it here by raising her ISO extremely high. And since she's at 6.3, she didn't have the ability, I'm assuming with her lens, to open it all the way up, which you could have swapped that for a faster shutter speed or a lower ISO. Um, but you guys, I don't know how I'm gonna judge this. I don't know how Key and I are gonna judge this because everything that I've seen so far is really great. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and roll through this. Dean, we're at ISO 100, which is great. You're at 5.6 at 1400. Dean, I probably would have went to 400 ISO, which would have put you at about 1 1200th of a second or 1 1250th of a second. That would have uh, frozen the wings of the bird. Now, sometimes when I photograph birds in flight, I like to actually have a blurry wingspan. So that's my own personal opinion there. Um, but Dean, I've watched you progress a lot as you got your, since you've gotten your DSLR through the, through the group. Um, so you're doing really well here. The thing about birds in flight is you want to capture their head, okay? More importantly than that, you want to capture their head sharp. So you do want to position your side, yourself on the side of the bird. Now, sometimes this means you got to pre-visualize and actually position yourself ahead of time, which, of course, we made this challenge, the birds in flight challenge, to be extremely difficult. Um, and which is what, why it drug, drug on for so long, which is why we're giving away a free pass to our Frame Your Future class. So whoever wins this actually gets a free pass to our class, okay? So I don't know how we're gonna judge this. <laughs> and let me know what you guys think of our new setup here. This is um, a work in progress, and I think we're gonna add some stuff as we move along, maybe move our artwork along. And again here, just like I was talking about with Dean's image, we've got a bird facing the other direction here with Andrew's image. I think this is his entry. He might have changed it, um, but we'll review this one. Again, ISO 400. This is an overcast day, 7.1. You're really struggling for light here, I can tell. At 1 200th of a second at 7.1, um, you're, you're pushing it there, Andrew. Um, I definitely would raise my ISO, go to 800 or somewhere in between 400 and 800. Give yourself a faster shutter speed. Give yourself that latitude to be able to capture the bird sharp if you do happen to get it in focus. And next up we got Francis's image. This is fantastic. This is a great representation of framing your image well. Now what do I mean when I, when I say that? His birds, even though they're facing away, are completely sharp and they're very uniquely positioned, okay? So, um, hopefully you guys can see that. Francis um, didn't crop off the wings, didn't crop off this guy's head, and then he's got the ducks down here positioned extremely well. So this is really great storytelling. I can tell what the, they're doing in the background. He's, he's actually looking at Francis, which is funny. And then, I mean, the birds, it's perfect focus. Uh, ISO 400, 6.3 at 1 1250th of a second, uh, 300 millimeter. I mean, this is excellent work, Francis. This is excellent work, so great job. Um, Francis is uh, quickly rising to be a star, um, and this shows it right here. All right, next we got Greg up. We got, uh, this is a great capture. When I'm looking at, especially on our new monitor, it's hard for me. Looking at Facebook images by themselves is tough um, just because they're so compressed. But now we've got those compressed files on an extremely large screen. 
So I've actually got them a little smaller just to be sure that I'm not getting more pixelation than necessary. So judging the focal point here is gonna be tough. It does look sharp from here, but it does maybe look a little off, but without reviewing the original image, that's tough to say. Um, with that said, uh, again, we're looking at, I want everybody to be looking at where is the highlight and where is the shadows of images. And here you can see highlight here and then shadow here. Um, and that's what you want to do is position yourself on the side of the bird um, that is lit directly by the sun. Photographing birds in flight is a lot easier in direct sunlight because you have more light. It gives you the ability to have a lower ISO and a faster shutter speed. With that said, Greg here is at 100, uh, 1 400th of a second, which is pushing it. I mean, birds in flight, you usually want to be probably, a, I mean, depending on what bird you're photographing. Obviously, birds are going to change pace depending on which bird you're photographing and how fast they are flying, okay? And whatever they're doing. They might be landing, so they might be decreasing their speed. If they just took off from a perch, they're gonna be accelerating, okay? So again, shutter speed really literally, literally means to match your speed of your subject. So if you're photographing like a motorcycle going by, you're gonna be at a faster shutter speed to freeze it in motion. Um, Lisa, I, I saw you uh, posting a lot of birds in flight images, and I remember this one coming through and thinking, you could have been, since I can tell the perches of the birds, and these birds are probably, probably flying pretty slow because it looks like they're probably in a feeding session. I would have probably swapped my ISO down a little bit brought my aperture lower and then kept it at 500. So you could have went to like ISO 200 and then um, F4 if you had it and kept it at 500 or something like that just to really bring out the richness of this color here. Um, and then, you know, I want to point this out to you, Lisa, because you may have a dust spot on your sensor right here. You may want to look out for this. You usually won't see dust spots on a sensor for most images, but you will see them when you have an image that has a, um, a background that is solid, more solid, like you see here. And then the sunset is great and the silhouette is great. So this is really awesome. It actually tells a story. And what I really like about this image is you can actually see the ocean or the sea or the lake right behind here, which would have been cool if you could have actually raised up a little bit. I don't know where you were or what your situation was here, but if you could have raised yourself up a little bit, you would have been able to see more of the ocean behind you and that would have really told more of the story here to me. All right, Janet, we've got, um, we've got a red-tailed hawk at, at Tim's Fort Dam in Tennessee. So, great capture here. It's looking a little bit out of focus, or this could be cropped in from an original photo, which actually looks like it may be the case here. Let me know, Janet, if this is your photograph. Um, I mean, I know it's your photograph, but let me know if you were cropped in, <coughs> because it does look like you were. At 400 ISO, I'm seeing a little bit more grain than normal. Um, other than that, I mean, you're, you guys know I like to nitpick, right? So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, normally, I, if I saw this image come across, I wouldn't nitpick like this. But on weekly reviews, that's what we do here, okay? We, we pick them apart. So don't feel like if I say, oh, my gosh, you cropped in, you shouldn't have done that, and take that never crop again, okay? With this image, I can just tell that it's probably cropped at 300 millimeter unless you were unless they were flying like directly over you um, but you're looking a little soft but again it's hard to judge that on facebook files so without looking at the original photo i think this is cropped in a little bit which is fine um you're at two thousandths of a second which is right okay you should be doing that <clears throat> um depending on the speed of the bird you did well you did really well okay i love to see this image come through this was awesome i had one it looks pretty straight. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Um, 
this one tells a story to me, okay? I really like this photograph because, you know, you can make up any kind of conversation you want between these two birds. Now, we're talking about a birds in flight challenge. Holly, you focus right here, which kind of put this bird out of focus. If you, I mean, all your settings are right. I mean, your settings are perfect. But your focus is right here, and the bird is a little soft, okay? Which is fine. Um, I really like how you can tell that the feet are about to land on the perch of the birdhouse. Um, so I like the story that this tells. You know, again, a nitpick this one here, this little dome here is kind of cutting off the wingspan of the bird. So you can work, you know, that's not something you can really fix. Um, this is an amazing capture, okay? Great job here. Um, I would stick at this and um, track your birds. You know, you could be on autofocus, continuous, and track your birds. Tracking a bird this small, I know, is not easy. But your settings are perfect. I mean, these are great. Your exposure is right on. The color looks good. Um, this bird here is extremely sharp. All right, Julie, we saw this one come through. In fact, Dan saw this come through and mentioned it, and he sucks at photography. <laughs> ISO is low, that's good. Shutter speed could have been a little faster. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Um, I would have went to 5.6, which would have been minus one stop and then swapped over to one four hundredth of a second, which would have given you the same amount of light because you're going minus one. Um, you're going plus one to go 5.6, and then you're going to go minus one to go one four hundredth of a second, which is going to balance out your exposure the same. So it would look the exact same, but you'd have a faster shutter speed, which would give you a more frozen birds in flight, which I can't tell from here because it's such a low resolution. But all that aside, your settings are great. You did an extremely good job. I think the story that this tells is great. This bird here being lonesome, I mean, you couldn't have done much better job here, to be honest with you, yeah. All right, Jackie, um, we just reviewed one of your images, but I think I might have saved two, but I do want to talk about this one for a second. This one's most definitely cropped way in, and you can tell by the fringing right here along the edges of the focal point. And I don't know if you guys can see this on screen. Let me see if I can turn my screen a little bit better. Um, there's this fringing on the bird and that's usually done, that's an optical. Um, this is an optical issue that happens with long focal lengths. Uh, most especially, well I should say lenses that have long focal lengths. Um, something like 600 millimeter where there's multiple layers of glass, okay? If there's multiple layers of glass, that means every time you zoom to stay in focus, it has to actually magnify, okay? And every time you magnify through a layer of glass, you're gonna get a little bit of distortion, okay? And that's what you see here. You see this blue fringing. And if you zoomed in on this, Jackie, you would see this even more. And you can correct for this in Photoshop, but it's not great. All right, Francis, we already reviewed your entry. Uh, Christina, this, I love this image, okay? So this image here is unique because it's taking on an artistic style and Christina is an artist um, at heart and she is a photographer too. She's in our Framing Future class. She knows dang well that she needs to be at a really fast shutter speed to capture the birds in flight. And she actually purposely underexposed in order to get the silhouette that you see here. Okay, so this is artistry in the making, um, and that's what you do, that's what we do in Frame Your Future. Is we t we teach you to be an artistic photographer. Okay, and then you've got uh, the sun peeking behind you. So when you look at this photograph, you actually kind of think, well, maybe this is like late in the at night or something like that. But it's not. This is during the day. Okay, this is an over. This is a partly cloudy, somewhat overcast day, and she's catching the sun right behind the clouds. You can actually see the circle of the sun right here right behind the clouds and then underexposed and intentionally to make sure that she's getting the birds and the trees completely uh, black, a, completely, a complete silhouette, which is what she did here. So fantastic job there, Christina. 
Andrew, this image really stood out to me because we've been talking about capturing the birds in flight. What time do you got to set up, Dan? Uh, no, we, I got 20, 25. Okay, so we got enough time. We're kind of sharing this computer right now, so he's got to set up for what he's got to do here in 25 minutes, so. Andrew, I saw this image pop through and it really stood out to me because like we were talking about birds in flight is you do want to capture the head in focus, which again, it's, it's like it's like hitting it's like hitting a bullseye literally in the air with a subject moving. So it's not easy, okay? So you do got to plan, pre-visualize and even pre-select whatever type of mo focusing mode you're using on the side of the camera that you want to capture the bird on. So it's not easy. Um, but he did it here. He did it here. The bird's head is completely sharp. And you can tell he's at 5.6 because the bird's wings are in front, okay? And, and, and they're slightly out of focus, okay? And that's what that bird is doing here. Um, and you nail it. I mean, I can see where he took off from. And the bird's head is in focus. And even though it was a dull gray murky day in Wales, he knew to raise his ISO to 640 to get a faster shutter speed. And I'm assuming he's using a lens that won't go any wider than 5.6. So he did everything right. Nailed the focus. And this is definitely on a short list of winners, Andrew. You did a fantastic job. Oh, and not to mention the rule of thirds. Boom, right there on the exact rule of thirds. And I don't even think this is a crop. So good job. Uh, Caroline Clarkson, a master of photography. Um, Caroline pretty much wins one of almost all of our contests in some way, first, second, or third, and it's for a reason. Again, I don't want to keep plugging our Frame Your Future class, but people in our Frame Your Future class master photography in months and not years, and that's what she did here. She, just take a look at her settings. I mean, not only is this a gray, murky day in England. A great murky day. <laughs> a gray, murky day in England. She's not afraid of a high ISO, okay? Which I'm not afraid of a high ISO, especially if I get my amount of light correct, okay? She's at 1,000 ISO at 1 uh, 2,500th of a second, which again is extremely fast, okay? She captured this bird almost touching the water. Now, Caroline, not only are you probably gonna win our contest, you could probably win another contest for money with this photograph. This is fantastic. Rule of thirds, almost touching the water, the ripple effect reflection, the murkiness. Now, I, even though it's at a high ISO, I would probably run this through a noise reduction and then sharpen it up just to get rid of some of the color noise that you see here. And keep it, I keep it at the cyan type look, that color of cyan. It's not blue, it's more of a grayish blue, okay? <clears throat> I'd keep it there. And I'd reduce the noise a little bit, not a lot. And then sharpen it up, and then you've got an award winner. Oh gosh, what did I do? All right, Mariah, Maria. I never know how to say it. I'm gonna assume it's Maria. Um, not quite a bird in flight, but I can see what you were doing here. One four hundredth of a second. Now, uh, Maria, what I would do here is if it's overcast, if it's overcast in your mind, usually that tells me immediately to go to 400 ISO. Unless I see myself in a position where I'm like, my subject's not moving very fast, I can lower my ISO for this, like a portrait, okay? Um, for birds in flight, I definitely would swap, um, bring my ISO, my, my image sensitivity, my light sensitivity to 400, which is going to increase the ISO, which would give me the ability to increase my shutter speed, which, you know, so if you go up in ISO, you're actually plus one, okay? And which gives you the ability to go to a faster shutter speed. So you'd be able to double, double your shutter, shutter speed to one eight hundredth which is minus one. So that balances each other out, which would give you the same amount of light that you see here. All right, we already did that one. Misty Bernard, Fast Flying Birds Weekly Photo Challenge. She's at 800 ISO. She knows, again, she's in Frame Your Future. She knows to raise her ISO in order to capture a bird in flight sharply. So that's what she did. She did, went to a, a 800 ISO. 
and she's at f8 she had to be at f8 because her lens fully zoomed in i think is a 6.3 to 8 or something like that so she couldn't go any wider with her with her aperture so that's why you see her at f8 which is great and then because she's at 800 iso it gives her the ability to be at f8 and then she's at uh, 1 12 50th of a second, which is why this bird is completely sharp. And not only that, but the bird's eye has a twinkle, okay? This is a fantastic image. I might even buy this image for Misty, to be honest. This is fantastic. How excited is this bird to have a full peanut to itself? And then, and then, and then the wings, you can see he's just taking off. You can actually see the lift of the bird right here catching the wind underneath it. And then you can see all the little strands of the feathers on, on the blue jay here. I mean, just perfect image, just perfect. Just barely off the ground, almost touching, almost touching the deck here. Ian Walker, we've got, okay, ISO 100, that's great. F8, F500, oh yeah, that's great. Uh, Ian, you're, you're right on top of it. Again, it's, it looks like a cropped image, so it's tough to say whether or not this is completely sharp. If you crop into an image, even though you're in focus, sometimes it will look out of focus, okay? Depending on the resolution of your camera. I think I reviewed that one. And then we got Rob Moore. All right, Rob, um, you're doing exceptionally well in your field. I know you're a wildlife photographer and you're learning. We talked about this, I think, privately how to pre-visualize and then kind of, you're almost like, you're almost like a spy or you're almost like, you know, like a detective or something. You have to, you have to work out the mechanics of where your owls are or whatever it is that you're hunt, hunting. You're kind of like a hunter. Okay. You got to place yourself in positions and Rob is, I've seen him, I've seen his personal page where he's getting down and dirty. I mean, he's in like, blinds in the water in the murky water and stuff and that is the grit that it takes to be a top level photographer and rob is well on his way to be doing that i mean he captured this owl you can see that you can see the pupils of the owl and that tells me it almost tells me what aperture you're at by looking at the owl's eyes because you know the, the pupil of an eye is identical to the, the purpose of the pupil of any any living organism's eye is the same as the purpose of the aperture of your lens and that is to control the amount of light that's coming into your camera or your body brain or whatever capturing this bird in flight he's at look at he went to 1600 iso indirect sunlight okay it looks actually like this is closer to sunset or sunrise because I can tell this bird is lit directly um, in highlight here, even, but his settings are telling me there's, there wasn't a lot of light there. So this is likely a sunrise or sunset situation. I'm gonna guess sunrise. Let's see what he said. I close to 90, 10, 80, 80, 80, 80. Rob says, pro tip, when targeting owls, learn their patterns their favorite hunting ground and favorite favorite perches. This makes getting close about 90 times easier as the owls come comes to you with super sensitive hearing. I get worried they can hear. He's right about that, okay? Owls can see and hear just about everything, okay? Hawks and everything like that. So you do have to be really careful and you do got to kind of set up before the birds actually come, okay? And then then you got to be real quiet. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a lot like hunting. And again, I mean, this is tack sharp at 400. This is telling me one, at one 400th of a second, this is telling me that this bird wasn't flying very fast. He's probably on the hunt. Okay. He's going to, he's just kind of lurking in the air, looking for something to pick up. Um, so Rob, you're on our short list here of winners. This is fantastic. And actually that's it. That was our last image. Um, everybody, you guys, everybody that entered this challenge, you switch, did. Switch back, Jake, to the camera. Let them know we're doing our switchboard, figuring it out. Uh, you can see we're working on our switchboard over here. This flips my cameras back and forth, so you're seeing me full screen now. I kind of got to look over here. I got to look back to see. Um, with that said, everybody, that was the weekly review. Uh, with that said, everybody, that was Certified Photo Training's weekly review, Birds in Flight Challenge. We are giving one free pass 
to the, the number one winner to our Frame Your Future four-step transformation photography class. So be on the lookout for uh, the winners here. Kia and I have to take the chance to get a chance to judge these yet. Um, I got a good idea as I did this weekly review of who's going to win. Um, but with that said, you are all winners. You all did exceptionally well here. Capturing any bird in flight is hard, even if they're out of focus, okay? So getting a bird in flight that's in focus is that alone should be enough for everybody to know that you're on the right track. You did really, really well. And even those of you that went out there to capture a bird in flight and didn't get one, you learned a lesson, right? That it is difficult, okay? And it's fun too. It's almost like hunting. So with that said, we're going to wrap this up. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We're going to continue to do the next uh, as we do the weekly challenges, we're going to always do a weekly review after that. With that said, I'm just going to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag here. Our next weekly review is going to be solo, or our next weekly challenge is going to be solo portraits. Okay, So individual people, portraits. All right, So I expect to see a lot of shallow depth of field. Make sure you're focusing on the eye. Communicate with your subject. And remember that expressions matter. All right, So we'll see you guys later. Hope you enjoyed that. Take care.